All right, so this morning we're going to be talking about adjusting your parking brake on your 1990 all the way up to 2005 Mazda Miata. They all work the exact same way. There are a few different variations of the brakes, um, but the differences are the rotor and the bracket. Uh, the caliper is the same between all of them. So with different rotor sizes and different bracket orientations, it will change the position because the diameter changes, uh, but they all do function the exact same. So first we're gonna take a look at the basic functionality with one here on the bench. So the most important part of this caliper, which is kind of the biggest problem with them, is the actual parking brake adjustment. So normally there would be this little cap in here, it just goes on there, it has a little crush washer, basically to keep moisture out. And inside there is your adjuster, you can see down in there. And that is driven by a four millimeter Allen wrench, follows the normal rules, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And this does two very important things for us. The first thing is that when you're installing new pads in your caliper, that is what you'll use to retract the piston. So you'll turn it to the left and it will actually draw the piston in, which will allow you to put your new pads in. And then once you've got the new pads installed, you'll have to adjust the parking brake. Um, every time that you install pads or rotors, you will have to adjust the parking brake. That's just kind of the way it works on these. It's also one of the most common things to fail. Um, there's a number of different ways that these can fail. Um, if you take the little cap off of it and you see fluid leaking out, that means that an internal seal has gone bad. Pretty much means you need a new caliper. Um, the other thing that can happen is the adjuster in there can seize. Um, if it takes anything more than just a little bit of wrist action on it, it's seized up. Um, if you do force it, it will probably just strip something inside of it. Um, no harm done really because it was pretty much already um, needing to be replaced. But it should just take, I mean, just, just wrist action or less to adjust that. Um, the other thing that we've seen a number of times is that it will turn just fine, but as you turn it, the piston won't move at all. Or the piston will move one way, but not the other way when you change directions. Um, any of those situations basically means that you need a new caliper, you probably won't be able to install your new pads, and you definitely won't be able to adjust the parking brake. So, unfortunately, this is kind of a stupid design. Um, when we get these in the shop, you know, if we have somebody coming in for rear brake pads, it's about a 50% chance that they're going to need a caliper um, just because of the age and because of this sort of goofy design. If any of those things I listed goes wrong, then um, there's nothing really you can do. All right, so now we're going to take a look at how to adjust the parking brake properly once it's in the car. So we've got brand new pads and rotors installed on this car. Also new calipers uh, because of exactly what I described. The brakes basically worked okay, um, but we weren't able to retract the piston to install the new pads. So um, it's just an unfortunate reality. So we got these installed and we're gonna go do the adjustment. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because this car, like a lot of cars, um, had made some very, someone had made some very common mistakes um, when it comes to adjusting the parking brake. And so we're going to go through uh, the do's and don'ts. So the first thing when it comes to adjusting a parking brake is you have an adjustment on the handle. Now, this is something I'm going to show first, but you should pretty much never have to adjust this. The two times that you would have to adjust this would typically be 
if you installed new cables or if someone else has adjusted this and uh, made a mess of it and you have to readjust it. So if you're not replacing the cables and nobody else has touched this, you shouldn't have to touch this. But basically there's a, a plastic plate here that covers it. There's just one screw that goes in there and that pops off. And over on the back side of it, there is a weirdly shaped little fastener in there. You can see it's got a slot in it. I can get the light in there. You can see that it's got a little slot in it. Um, it does also have a hex head, so you could use a wrench or a large flathead screwdriver. Now what that does is that basically sets the tension of the cables. So we're going to go underneath the car and explain exactly what that means. So here we are underneath the car and that cable comes off of the parking brake handle and it comes out right underneath here. So you can see right there, it basically goes into a sort of T-bracket right there. And then, so the single cable then gets split and will basically balance the force across the two other cables. And what you want to see is that cable should be pretty much perpendicular to the center line of the car. Um, if, it's, if it's at sort of like a weird angle, usually that means it's got a bunch of preload on it and it's kind of pulling one of the parking brake cables. And you can kind of give that a quick test for the tension. If you just go up on there, give it kind of a little pull down. And what you should see when that happens is if you give that just a little pull, so this is where it comes out and then comes over to the back of the caliper. And what you should see is when you pull down on that, that you get just a little bit of movement. And if you just barely touch it, you get just barely a little bit of movement. That should be the case on both sides. Just a little bit of movement. And basically all you're checking for there is that the cable is not sloppy and hanging loose. Um, or that it's also not pulling. Um, you don't want it to be putting tension on the uh, the actual parking brake mechanism. So this lever is what's moving things inside the caliper. So that's how it should be adjusted. It should be just to the point where it doesn't have any slack on it and everything's kind of balanced out. And then, like I said, if you just give it just a little pull, you know, it should feel kind of loose. And when you pull on it, you should see those two levers on the parking brakes move. And that's also kind of a good test to see if you have a seized up cable or anything like that. Um, that kind of proves to you that, you know, a little bit of tension on there gives you a little bit of movement. So I wanted to show that and say again, you should not have to adjust that. If, if you're thinking about adjusting your parking brake, the first thing you should be thinking about is coming down here and looking at this guy right there that we showed on the bench, the 14 millimeter. So once you've got this installed, all you're gonna do is pop that out. You're going to put your Allen wrench in there and you're going to tighten it 
just to, I mean, just like fingertips on there. If you put any amount of torque in it, you'll strip out the insides of it. Also, you can see this thing almost pulled itself out. Uh, there's nothing really holding that adjuster in there. So make sure it doesn't fall out when you're working with it. Now with just that little fingertip amount of torque, see this is not able to be moved. So that's good. I know that we've got it tight enough, everything's seated down flat. And then you're gonna come under and just back it off. Uh, I believe the factory manual says about a third of a turn. Um, it's pretty hard to get that exactly, but using this T handle, I can kind of go about, there's like half a turn, maybe go back just a little bit. So about a third of a turn that you've loosened it now. So what we did is we made sure it was all the way tight down, backed it off a third. Now it moves and you'll hear it drag a little bit. That's normal, you always, you'll always hear a little bit of uh, contact between the pad and rotor, but it should be able to move without really any major force. And that's it, that's your parking brake adjustment. There's nothing more to it, just put the cap on the back. But if you followed these steps and your parking brake doesn't work, almost always means that you need a new caliper. So that's, that's the unfortunate reality. The other unfortunate piece about this is we've tried every different brand of remanufactured calipers that we can find. And about one in three show up dead on arrival. Brand new part doesn't work. So I always test them here on the bench. Like this one's one that we have in stock. And before I put it on the shelf and, you know, know that we have this in stock, I went through and spun it back and forth, made sure that the piston will compress and retract. So that way I know if we have somebody come in who needs a caliper, I know that that one's good to go. Cannot trust that a brand new one in the box is going to be good, unfortunately. So there you go. Pretty simple stuff. Um, but I know there's not a lot of good information out there about it, and it's something we see a lot of mistakes on. So hopefully this helps some people. And as always, please like and subscribe, and drop any questions that you have in the comments, and I will be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys.